Hey guys, before we get started, I want to invite you to comment below and just take a couple minutes, maybe share, tag a friend, um, and just start a conversation. These topics are developed based on your feedback, your questions, so the more questions we get, the more discussions we get, uh, just the more we can learn together. And so if you have something that you disagree with me, if you have something that you wanna to add to this discussion, just go ahead and comment below and let's get the discussion going. Okay, now that you have gotten through your initial testing phase and you've kind of scheduled out your retesting, right, or your reassessment uh, times within your timeline, then you can start talking about, okay, what, how are you gonna fill the gaps? Now the reason why I lay out the testing uh, pieces first is that it's gonna change. If you have six months to train here, that is very, very different than if you had three months. And that difference is gonna dictate how you fill that time. So, how do we fill that time? We wanna fill that time by building your base, okay? So really simply, you wanna look at the priorities that you have laid out, right? The biggest things that you need to improve and you wanna list them, okay? One through three. Working on more than three priorities within a training cycle is really, really difficult to do and chances are you're gonna get a bunch of concurrent signaling, which basically means you're gonna have um, all these adaptations, these things that you're trying to improve, improve uh, interfering with one another. And a really, really simple example is that if you want to get uh, really, really strong and you want to develop your aerobic engine, those things, chances are they're going to fight one another. So if you have more, if you're working on more than three priorities at any given time, chances are you're going to be leaving something on the table. So you have to decide what are your top three. So let's do this. Let's make up the top three priorities for you. Number one. Muscle endurance. Number two, let's just say threshold work, aerobic threshold work. And number three, let's just say movement. There are a whole bunch, and we can get a lot more specific, meaning what type of muscle endurance. It could be upper body pulling muscle endurance. It could be lower body knee flexion muscle endurance. We could have threshold work. Is it mixed modal threshold? Is it cyclical threshold? Uh, movement, right? Again, what type of movement? We're keeping it really generic just to illustrate this timeline. When we go into uh, testing and how to identify different priorities and what that actually means in future weeks, we can get very, very specific into that. So for all intents and purposes, right, again, really general, muscle endurance, threshold work, and movement. Very, very broad topics. Your three should be a lot, lot more specific. The more complex of an athlete or the more advanced of an athlete you are, the more specific these should be. So keep that in mind. So now that we have three priorities, what are we gonna do? Well, we have to start thinking within a timeline here. We have six months, right, to train these three characteristics, okay? Now there might be a whole bunch of other stuff out there that you need to improve, but remember, we wanna try to stick to three. So, muscle endurance. Now, are you gonna start working on muscle endurance, threshold work and movement in week one? That is a huge temptation, right? Muscle endurance. Let's say, you know, pull-ups, handstand push-ups, whatever it is, I'm just gonna start doing a lot of them. Now, here's the thing. If you start at 90% here, meaning that if you start with, you know, that foot on the gas, where do you have to go, right? You can only push things so much so far till something breaks or you just stop making gains. So you can't just take these and say, oh, I'm gonna just do a bunch of everything. Huge temptation, big mistake. What you have to ask yourself are what are the building blocks for muscle endurance? Well, for me, I think about 
aerobic base, right? You want to get oxygen, right, in the blood delivered to as many muscles and as efficiently as possible. That's going to help with muscle endurance, okay? It's also going to help with threshold work, if that makes sense. Um, however, threshold work, the thing that comes to mind for me is maybe some anaerobic power just to make sure that you keep uh, you know, that speed, that central nervous system kind of ramped up, ready to do that work when we progress out. So aerobic base, and let's just call it, you know, uh, alactic anaerobic work. Again, really generic, uh, and movement. Let's say movement, specifically, we want overhead position in the squat, okay? So we're going to say uh, T-spine work to prep the system. Uh, let's just say, you know, a bunch of scapular mobility in here, just to prep the system. Now, keep in mind, this right away within a month is not going to improve these characteristics that we have prioritized. The beauty about this, and right now we're just going to start focusing on muscle endurance. If we went down through every single one of these, we would be here all day. So follow me here. That aerobic base can be in the form of Z1 cycling uh, 40 minutes, right? Active recovery, nose breathing only. And then maybe we transition into mixed modal, right, Z1 work in the next month, right? So you've built a little bit of a base, right? You're breathing better, your body's adapted a little bit, and now we're gonna challenge it a little bit more by still maintaining a zone one or nose breathing, active recovery pace, but in a mixed modal sense. And we wanna make sure that we're targeting, right, the specifics of what we're trying to increase. So, right, muscle endurance. Again, is it lower body knee flexion like squatting? Is it upper body pulling? You kind of want to target, right, and prep the system within those same movements. So while we're working on mixed modal zone one work, we can add in, right, cyclical aerobic work. And here we can think about 85%. So this is actually aerobic work, not active recovery zone one work, okay? You can think about aerobic power as well. It's another way to classify it. Here, we can add cyclical work on top of the mixed modal work, okay? Now, from here, you can take this aerobic work and turn it into mixed modal aerobic work, if that makes sense. And then you can add in pieces that are going to support your muscle endurance a little bit more specifically. So what you could do is you could do forced work, uh, let's say EMOMs, okay? So this is going to be asking you to do big pieces of work specific to the type of muscle endurance you want to increase, but with systematic rest, right? So it could be five handstand push-ups, you're going to rest, right? And maybe you do 10 minutes every minute on the minute. Uh, the way you can, you can progress that within the cycle is one week you ask for five, the next week you ask for six, maybe the third week you go from 10 minutes to 12 minutes. So you can see how every week we're asking you to do a little bit more and your body's going to respond by getting stronger, fitter, and faster. That's essentially what we're trying to do. So now that we've uh, built an aerobic base, right, we've added in mixed modal work and we've prepped the specific movements, right, to fuel better, right, uh, provide, utilize uh, more efficiently the oxygen it's going to need, and we've started real aerobic work, so we're stressing your system in a little bit more aggressive way, and then we've transitioned to mixed modal uh, aerobic work, and we've started to very specifically tax the muscle groups in which you're specifically trying to improve. So the next step in which you could progress is taking this EMOM format and developing interval training or IWT training 
where you're going to start performing these movements, right, under some aerobic fatigue, some metabolic fatigue, and the intensity increases, but you still have intervals in which you could recover, if that makes sense. And then down here, maybe you have, uh, I would, I just like to call them, uh, you know, simple density training sessions, where it's going to be like 50 handstand push-ups for time, or it's going to be uh, 75 wall balls for time. You know, something short sweep, but it's going to, you know, ask you to push the characteristics of this muscle endurance a little bit more. Okay, so we can just call this, uh, you know, density training, right? The work that you're accomplishing here now is much greater than if you would have started out. If you just would have started out with this stuff, one, you would have very, uh, you wouldn't be able to go very far with this in terms of progressing things out. But just remember back where the mixed modal, right? Active recovery, aerobic base building, the aerobic work, the muscle endurance prep, all contributes to higher performance here, if that makes sense. From here, basically we can go into what maybe your sport or your tests look like. Chances are your tests look very similar to your sport. So you want to start developing, I would just say sport specific characteristics or sport specific demands on your system to kind of put the cherry on top, if you will. And this is going to lead into retesting right here, okay? So if we count them out, we've got one, two, three, four, five, yeah, perfect, five months leading into the sixth month of testing. This is the best way to prep, peak, taper, whatever you wanna call it. Um, this is really the best way to go about it. By just throwing random stuff up that includes muscle endurance and threshold movement work, you're gonna really limit the ability to progress beyond that ceiling that you've probably already created.